Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now just to give him the thanks right now. Just to give him the praise right now. Just to give him the glory. Hallelujah. We magnify and we exalt your holy name today, Jesus, in your house today. Father God, we give you the glory in your house right now today, Father God. Father God, we are giving you the praise in your house right now today, Jesus. And I want to say thank you for this beautiful and blessed, amazing day that you have given every last one of your sons and your daughters with today. We thank you for this opportunity right now today, Father God, that we are able to seek you, God, to lift your name up to the highest high right now today, Jesus. Father God, we praise and we worship your holy name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you are doing in our life, God. Father God, you are so amazing to us, God. You are so faithful. You are so grateful. You are so loving. You the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We can't do it without you, Jesus. So, Father God, we are counting on you right now today. We are depending on you right now today. We also are relying on you right now today because we know that you are still on the throne. You are still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in every last one of our life. God, you are good all the time and all the time you are good and you are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Because of you, Jesus, you gave me another chance today. Because of you, Jesus, you gave us another opportunity right now today. Father God, that's why I thank you so much. That's why I praise your holy name so much. That's why I glorify your name so much, God. Father God, so many times, Father God, that we spat in your face. Father God, so many times that we divorced you. So many times, God, we separated from you. So many times, God, we even cursed you out. But God, you never spat in our face. You never divorced us. You never separated us, God. And Father God, you still love us the same. That's why praise is so important, my brothers and my sisters. That's why praise is so necessary. That's why I encourage every last one of you to give Jesus the thanks and praise and glory each and every day because every last one of us has spat in his face more than one time. Every last one of us has divorced him more than one time. Every last one of us has cursed him more than one time. Every last one of us has separated from Jesus more than one time. Every last one of us had went to him because we know that we wanted something and the moment that Jesus gave it to us, we took our run and said, Jesus, we don't need you no more. Every last one of us done it more than one time. Now ask yourself this question right here today. You can't even put a price tag on it because there's, enough, there's not enough money to put a price tag on it. How many times have Jesus ever divorced you? How many times has Jesus ever spat in your face? How many times has Jesus even cursed you out or even separated from you or even told you, since you ran away from me, I'm not looking at you no more? He never done it. He never done it. So doesn't he deserve the thanks? Doesn't he deserve the praise? Doesn't he deserve the glory? The point I'm making right now, yes, he does. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. And if you want to give him the thanks and praise and glory, I'm going to give him the thanks. I'm going to give him the praise. I'm going to give him the glory. I'm going to magnify and shout out his holy name, but I'm also going to exalt his holy name for who he is. Amen. Amen. I believe right now today that somebody around the world right now today Someone around the world right now today just listening what God is saying right now. And I want to say thank you right now today, my brothers. I want to say thank you right now today, my sisters, for taking your time out and giving Jesus some thanks and praise and glory right now. Because what God just told you, it made sense. And you sit there and thought about it. You know what? Yes, I did divorce him a couple of times. Yes, I did even curse him out. I even spat in his face. I even separated from him. But he never done that for me. That's why I feel it in my spirit right now that somewhere around the world, somebody's giving Jesus some praise right now. Continue to praise him right now. 
praise him till you run out of breath. And when you run out of breath, ask God for some more air. And I guarantee you, he's going to supply you with so much air. The only thing that you want to do for the rest of the day is give him the thanks and give him the praise and give him the glory because he deserves it all. He don't owe us anything. We always going to be in debt with him. He died on the cross for every last one of us. Now we owe him that. Come on, come on, my sisters. Come on, my brothers. There's no limit to how long that you can thank and praise him. I don't care where you at right now today. Stop doing what you're doing right now today and open up your mouth and you give Jesus some praise right now in his house because at the end of the day, this is his house. This is his house that he's built. And I'm going to give him thanks and praise and glory. As long as I have breath, as long as I have my health and my strength, I'm going to give him the thanks and praise and glory in his holy mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for this opportunity right now, Father God. Father God, I thank you that you allow myself to be the overseer of your flock right now today, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for allowing me to minister in your ministry again right now today, God. Father God, take no credit what's about to go down in your house right now today, God. Father God, I'm coming to you right now today, my brothers and my sisters, to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for worship, that we are available right now today for us to continue to do your Father's will. We are available right now today for us to continue to build up the kingdom. We are available to do what you have called and chosen and considered us to do. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to have a seat at your table right now tonight, Father God. Your words tell us in the book of Matthew, verse 18, verse 19, where two or more gather in your name. There you are in the midst. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, our desktops, our laptops right now, our iPads, or whatever gadget that we have that we are using to listen to your word and to watch your word on YouTube, God. We know that you're in the midst. Father God, you have your way in your house right now today, God. Father God, there's no other way but your way, God. Father God, we came in for a reason and we came in for a purpose. And God, we ain't living your house until we come to get what we can need to come to get from you, Jesus. Father God, we asking you right now today to move in a way, God, that we know that you in here right now. Allow your spirit to move through us, God. Allow your energy to penetrate through our spirit and through our bodies right now today, God. Father God, we coming to you, we coming to you right now today to give you the thanks and praise and glory in your house, God. Father God, you know every last one of our needs, you know every last one of our concerns, God. And Father God, we know that you are healing, we know that you're providing. Father God, we can't do it without you, Jesus. So we are counting on you right now today. We are depending on you right now today, but also we also are relying on you right now today. Father God, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for this beautiful day. We want to say thank you for this opportunity, God. Thank you, God. And we love you in your holy mighty name. Amen and amen. Father God, I'm also coming to you right now today, God, because we are sinners, God. Please, I'm going to repent of my sins today. My brothers, they repent of their sins today. And also my sisters. Please forgive us, God, for anything that we have done wrong today in the sight of your eyes. Please forgive us, God. Please forgive us, God, if anything that we done wrong that was not right in your, in your heart, God. Father God, we do fall short, God. We do make mistakes, God. Father God, we are coming to you right now today, God, as sinners. We are coming to you right now today, God, for forgiveness. As we just repent of our sins to you, God, we want to say thank you, Father God, for, not, for forgiving us for our sin. We want to say thank you, Father God, for cleaning us up. We want to say thank you, Father God, for washing us clean. We want to say thank you, Jesus, for purifying us right now today. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for not remembering our sins anymore, God. Thank you, Father God. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give by him the Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, this came. Thank you, Lord, for this awesome and beautiful, blessed day today.
I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this anointing message. I just can't thank enough for the air that we's able to breathe right now today. I can't thank enough for our help and our strength. I can't thank enough, Father God, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. The clothes and shoes that you have put on that back. I just can't thank you, no know, Jesus, how you provided. I just can't thank you, no know, Jesus, how you making a way out of no way. I just can't thank you, no know, Jesus, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank no Jesus for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank no Father God how you forgiven us for our sins today. I just can't thank no Jesus how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today we don't even realize it. I just can't thank no Jesus for your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank no Jesus for who you are, what you have done, and what you're about to do. I just can't thank no Jesus for your words. I can't thank no Jesus for your promises. I just can't thank no Jesus, Jesus, for the open doors. I can't thank no Jesus for the door that you have closed. I can't thank no Jesus for our blessing, for our breakthrough, for our miracle, for our anointing, our deliverance. I can't thank no Jesus for our double portion. I can't thank no Jesus for our more than enough. I just can't thank no Jesus for the abundance of rain. I just can't thank no Jesus for the connection. I can't thank no Jesus for the for the resources. I just can't thank no Jesus for the stranger that we're about to meet, the Boaz that we're about to meet. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. That's why I praise your name. That's why I glorify your name. That's why I magnify your name. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Amen. Amen. I need you to hold it up. And I need you to say it like you mean it. And if you're ready, let the church say amen. This is my hammer that breaks down everything that is in front of me. His words and his promises are consuming fire that comforts me. I can do all things through this hammer that strengthens in me. Because of God's word, I am victorious and not a victim. Because of God's word, I am victorious and not a victim. That's why I thank you the way I do and praise you the way I do because you are so awesome to me. Amen? Amen. And if you're ready for God's word and if you're ready for church, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you please turn your Bibles to Psalms 46? And we're going to read verse 10. That's Psalms chapter 46. And we're going to read verse 10. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And the message that God spoke to me about, don't play checkers while you are making a chess move. Don't play checkers with the checkers while you are playing a chess move. Now you got two different types of game. You got a game that checkers and you have a game of chess. People who play checkers tends to run off their mouth a lot. Tends to know your story when they don't know anything about you. They, they tend to know what's going on in your household. They tend to know what's going on in your marriage. They tend to know what's going on in your finances, your health, your dreams, your business, and also in your ministry. People who play checkers hate a lot. They doubt you. They don't clap for you. They don't even root for you. They don't even believe in you. But a person who plays chess, they sit still. They examine the board. They don't never make the first move until why? Until G say, now you move. One thing about us, my brothers, one thing about us, my sisters, we get our feelings and our emotions involved 
while the checkers are running their mouth when God specifically tell us, if you know that I'm God, be still while I am examining the board. Be still and allow me to make the move for you. But some of us, what we do, we don't wait on God. We sit there and say, God, you taking too long. God, the checkers, they still making moves. We still right here on the board. God said, that's how I want you to be. Still right there on the board. Allow me to make the move. But what we do, we put God to the side. Say, God, you taking too long. God, I got to do this on my own. And the moment that we do that, God said, okay, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to sit right here and chill. I'm going to see how many times that you fall. I'm going to see how many times that you mess up. I'm going to see how many times that you get distracted because you are playing a checkers game. Instead of you playing a chess move. But when you know who God is and you understand him, that's why you gotta that's why you have to go on his words. That's why you have to go on his promises. You gotta have faith too. But when you go on his words and you go on his promises, he tells us right, he say, be still and know that I am God. If you be still and allow God to make your moves for you, you know that you are making the right move. Because the word of God said, he is the way, the light, and the truth. So if God is the way, and he is the light, and he is the truth, and he's a man that he should not lie, why should we not sit there and wait and allow God to make our move for us? Because every time a God make a move, he make his move silently. The church don't even know what God is doing behind the scenes. The church can't even see what God is already lining up. The church can't even see what God is about to do in our life. So we have to be still and know who he is. We have to be still and trust him or whatever decision that he's going to make for us. Because at the end of the day, once we give it to him, because 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, once we give our cares and our problems, our troubles and our anxieties to him, no longer does it belong to us anymore. It belongs to God. But what we do, we play snatch grab. God, you're taking too long. We got to take this problem on our own. And God said, you're doing that. It never belonged to me in the first place. That's why a lot of you right now today, you're still playing checkers. That's why you're still messing up. That's why you're still scrambling, trying to figure things out on your own. That's why you're getting frustrated right now today because you're playing checkers when you need to be playing a chess move. And one thing, I talked to one of my brothers uh, not too long ago, and he spoke this word to me so vividly clear. He said, LT, my brother, he said, whatever you're going through in life, you cannot allow your feelings and your emotions take control of what God is trying to do on the chessboard. He said, you cannot allow your feelings or your emotions to take control of what Jesus is doing on the chessboard. Because the moment you put your feelings and your emotions in it, your feelings and your emotions is going to take you down a down spiral road. And that's how we always losing. Because why? We got our feelings inside of it. We got our emotions inside of it. You got to put those feelings and those emotions, you got to put them on the back seat. You got to put them on the back burner and say, I know that you're there, but I can't see you that you're there. But what we do, we allow our feelings and our emotions to take over. In the moment that we allow our feelings, in the moment that we allow our emotions to take over, we start playing checkers. And we play checkers, we always tap out every single time. Now don't we? Yes, we do. And the reason why is because we don't know who God is. See, when you have a relationship with Jesus and when you understand him, that's why you got to go on the word of God. That's why you got to hold on to the hammer. That's why you got to trust everything what he says about you. Even though when things is looking rugged, looking rugged, even though things not looking pretty, even though you seem like that the enemy is slapping you with everything he can slap you with. The haters are hating on you. The doubters are still doubting you. The critics are still criticizing you. You still got to hear, hear what the family members are saying. You still got to hear what your friends are saying. You still got to hear what the church people are saying. You still got to hear what your in-laws are saying. It doesn't matter what none of them say. The only opinion that matters is what Jesus is telling you because Jesus is the one who is controlling controlling the chess board. Jesus never played checkers at all, but he do play chess. When you play checkers, you can talk on the board. You can talk. You can talk junk. But when Jesus played chess, he's quiet. 
He's silent. You never know where the next move is going to come. You never know what God is about to take you to. You never know what God is about, what God has already have lined up for you. Chess is a strategy game. That's why chess players, when they play, they sit there and look at the board. They examine the board before they make a move. They sit there and they be quiet. And they sit still and they wait on God. God, where do I go on the next move? Checkers, they just make the move. Why? Because a checker person plays with feelings. A checker person plays with emotions. That's why there's never no king or queen in checkers. That's why a chess player, before they make their move, they examine the board. And they sit there and they wait patiently. Sometimes it's a minute. Sometimes it can be five to ten minutes. But they sit there and they wait patiently and they ask God, God, what is my next move? And God will sit there, he examine that board. And when God examine that board, he speaks to him in a soft, still, nice, eloquent voice. And say, son, my daughter, move right there. And what do they do? They gently move their they, they, they place to their spot right there because they got their direction from Jesus. Not from feelings, not from emotions, but they got it from Jesus. I know what the enemy is doing right to you right now. I know his enemy is telling you that your, your wife don't want you no more. I know that the enemy is telling you that your husband don't want you no more. I know the enemy is telling you that it's over with. I know the enemy is telling you that your time is ran out. I know the enemy is telling you that you'll never get another chance, that you'll never get another opportunity. I know that the enemy is putting your all kind of stupid stuff all in your head telling you that, man, it's never going to happen. It's never going to work out. Man, you might well just curse God and die. You might well just give up. But Jesus said, if you know who I am, you will sit still. You will wait on me. The point I'm making right now today, my brothers, the point I'm making right now today, do not play checkers while you're playing a chess move. Allow Jesus to examine your board. That's step one. Step two, you wait on him. I don't care how long the wait is. You wait on him because God is making you wait. That means God is up to something. God has already worked it out. God has already figured out. God is going to test your faith to see are you going to play a checker move or are you going to allow Jesus to play a chess move. The third thing is trust him. Trust him on the move that he's going to make in your life. Because whatever move that Jesus is going to make in your life, it's the best move. The fourth thing, I tell you what, if it was nothing there, Jesus will not allow you to linger on in a situation if there's nothing to be figured out. Jesus will never allow you to be lingered on in a situation if the situation was not there to be figured out or even worked out. Then the four steps that you got to realize. The fifth thing, you always got to hold on to his words and hold on to his promises. Because Numbers 23 verse 19 says that he's a man, that he should not lie. That you, he has a command to bless those who love him, who trust him, but main of all, who's going to wait on him. Do not allow your feelings and your emotions get in the way while Jesus is playing a chess move on your behalf right now today. I believe right now today that Jesus is playing a chess move in somebody's marriage right now. And I know that the enemy is telling you that your marriage is over. It's final. It's done. The critics are telling everybody it's done. Your family members are telling you that it's done. Your in-laws are telling you it's done. they telling you, I told you you should never marry him. I told you it was never going to work. Your so-called friends are telling you that. I know people that's locked up, been incarcerated, and been incarcerated for a long time. The enemy is telling you that your time is up. You'll never get a job. Ain't no job going to hire you because you're a criminal. Ain't no job going to hire you because you got a felony record. Jesus said, I am God. Everything in this world belongs to me. Exodus 19 verse 5 says, Everything in the world belongs to him. Allow Jesus to play your chess for you. 
I know the enemy is telling that you'll never get that, that opportunity. I know the enemy is telling you that you'll never get that contract deal. You'll never get those endorsement deals. You'll never get those sponsors. The enemy is telling you ain't nobody going to invest in your future. Anybody going to help you with your business. Your kids will never amount to nothing. Jesus, you can never listen to a chuck or pail while Jesus is making a chess move on your behalf. So if Jesus is quiet on your behalf right now today and you don't see things happening, and you don't see why, why you still going through what you're going through. It's because Jesus is already examining your board. He know when and how, when he's going to make the next move. But the more that you continue to be quiet, Jesus will make a move on your behalf. But the moment that you start running your mouth like a checker person, he's going to sit back and say that you know more than me. He's going to let you have it. Do not let your feelings, do not let your emotions get in your way. While Jesus is making a chess move on your behalf right now today. And if Jesus is talking to you today, and you know that this word is for you right now today, I want you to open up your mouth right now today. And I want you to give Jesus all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory in his house right now today. Amen? Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working. Everything got in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and your fellow sisters. Always continue to seek him and search for him. Jesus is good all the time and all the time he is good. This servant minister LT. I love y'all. Y'all stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. God bless you. Amen.